Men's basketball puts a beat down on Virginia. You add a little lemon to it, and all of a sudden, we're drinking the Kool-Aid. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat over 50 infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A. S-E medical.com. Happy Monday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, I got to tell you what, you weren't lying about this lemon deal and a little bit of some Kool-Aid. You weren't lying. Excuse me for a second here. Let me tell you something now. Let me tell you something. Not only is this drink the real deal, Coach Keith's coaching was the real deal in this ball game. The, the rotations perfectly executed. The out-of-bounds plays, drawn up masterfully. What a job. What a job. And, you know, we we had some folks saying that, hey, out-coaching Tony Bennett ain't that much of a big deal or ain't that much of a flex. Let me tell you something now. Six-time regular season champ, two-time ACC tournament champ, one-time NCAA champ. I'm sorry to tell you, that's a Hall of Fame resume. Out-coaching a Hall of Famer that's on the underside of 55 or 60, uh, my brother in Christ, you won. You did the thing. Okay, not going to say he did his big one because he still got room to grow. That's a damn good win by Coach Keats. Wonderfully put together ball game. Virginia may or may not be struggling right now, but again, this is an ACC ball game against a team that's one of the premier teams in the conference for quite some time. So despite how they currently look, this is a big win to knock down on Saturday. You beat Virginia by a score of 76 to 60. It was an all-around performance. You had several major contributors. The defense played exceptionally well, arguably won them the game, I would say, even despite the fact that we shot almost 50% in totality. But I was impressed with the rotations. I was impressed with the adjustments. The thing I was the most impressed with here is this is a game where two of your leaders kind of stayed out of the spotlight in, in that Casey Morsell and DJ Burns had relatively low impacts in this game, but everyone else stepped up to answer the bell. Michael O'Connell played excellent in this game. Ben Middlebrooks played excellent in this game. Dennis Parker Jr., the freshman, excellent in this game. He had 15, I believe, tied for the lead in scoring for the Wolfpack in this one. Three of five from three-point land. He had that circus shot from Tuffy's ear. When that one went in in the first half, it's one of those shots where you get that early indication like, okay, things are already going our way here from the jump. I like the look of this one so far. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that I would probably say is Jaden Taylor's defense on Beekman. Phenomenal. Excellent. Excellent. Phenomenal. 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 All over the place. He was all up in that young man. And I tell I say it all the time. The reality is when you look at these, when you look at how schemes work out and all that good stuff, I want to say the biggest thing about defense in basketball is effort. It's, it's effort more often than not. If you're not coming with some, you know, intensive rotations, if you're not coming with a, a specific type of zone that is very abnormal, it's mostly about effort. It's mostly about how hard do you work to get over that screen. It's mostly about how hard do you work to get in your position in the rotation. That's what it's mostly about. And Jaden Taylor exerted effort all night long to make sure that Beekman did not go off and, and do anything crazy there. And so, you know, you talk about the defensive effort, it started and ended with him. And that's rare because you don't often think about good defense starting with a perimeter guy. Jaden Taylor, you know, you mentioned his aggression in this game, not just on the defensive end. I love his aggression getting to the rim and subsequently the foul line 
where he went 5 of 5 from there. So great effort from Jaden Taylor in this game. I've been kind of waiting for him to maybe reemerge. Jaden Taylor looked like a leader in this one. Like I mentioned, when you don't have a phenomenal game from DJ Burns, you need everyone else to kind of rally the troops. And Jaden Taylor was a pushing force in that. But again, Michael O'Connell and Ben Middlebrooks played winning basketball in this one. They were very smart. They contributed big time buckets, grabbing loose balls, making the extra pass. Love what I saw from those two because they've been kind of relatively out of the limelight lately as well. So this is a an, another perfect example of the depth. We keep talking about the depth of this team. Put it on display in this one. When you don't have your premier player leading the way, everyone else steps up and contributes however they can. And against a team like Virginia, you need all hands on deck. So spectacular effort across the board in this one. It's great to start off 3-0 in conference. It's great to start off 3-0 in conference. Despite some of the early struggles out of conference, despite some of the kind of, you know, adjustments and, and rough times in terms of figuring out uh, what the best rotations and whatnot were, it seems that we figured out something here. You know, have all the games been pretty? Absolutely not, right? You look at a Boston College game where you kind of thought to yourself, all right, they put this thing away. Oh, no, they didn't. Boston College is back. All right, now we got to put away. Nope, no, we don't. You look at the Notre Dame game where – they had us dead to rights. Okay. They had us dead to rights. But I mean, hey, Jaden Taylor just he, he just had the foresight to commit that foul when he did to put him at the free throw line. And of course they missed. But in all seriousness, you know, you, you get what you get there uh with another beautifully drawn up play by Keaton. And this one left no doubt. Left no closeness, left no like, oh, what's going on here? Just Beat the brakes off them. You love to see it. You hang around with the Boston College team on the road, but you end up getting that win in overtime. ACC road wins that come at a premium, so that was a big-time deal. You narrowly escaped South Bend with another ACC road victory. You put the beats on UVA. You're coming into a matchup with UNC on Wednesday night. You're 3-0. and They're 3-0. and You're fighting for the top couple spots here in the conference. It's exactly where you want to be at this point in the season. So, all of the naysayers in the actual sense of the word that wanted to hate on Keats, you know, looking quite frankly bad at Notre Dame to turn this around and look excellent against UVA. This is why you can't throw in the towel on January 4th or January 5th, whatever the time being is. There's still a whole lot of season left. And so when this team really gets going and they start to set into their rotations and everything starts to gel like we've sort of been waiting on it to do, you can have a game like UVA where you dominate them from about the middle part of the first half on. You take a lead into halftime and you never look back from there. It was nearly a wire-to-wire -wire win and very impressive in doing such. So perhaps they're starting to catch on at the right time here. Again, the matchup on Wednesday really needs no introduction. You see what they've done so far this year too. So it really feels like we've built some momentum coming into it though. Hey, listen, I hate to get a Dirty Foot Club credit, but they look like a, a very well put together basketball team. They got some serious leadership, got some serious scoring firepower. Let's see what Wednesday's matchup brings us. I'll tell you what, though, if they pull off that one as well, to break this stuff back out. Kent was telling me about some pink Himalayan salt. I got to go ahead of the recipe next time. Let me let me see, Grayson, you, this is why I don't be giving out the recipe to nobody because that was supposed <laughs> to be me and you. That was supposed to be out there. But but I'll, I'll tell you this, locked on Wolfpack family, y'all can go ahead and get in on this thing too. All right, it's it just you just got to put a little little about a tablespoon in the pitcher, you know, and that you'll be all right. You'll be all right. But I, the reality is, we'll bring the Kool Aid back because at that point, if you're not drinking the Kool Aid, I want to ask you why. I want to ask you why. What have you seen that you would say this is realistic for this team and my expectations beyond a four no start? with wins over ACC powerhouses. That's right. Up next, we're going to reverse winning a game comfortably to narrowly losing one on the road. The women's basketball team suffered a heartbreaker. We're discussing that after a quick word from our sponsors. The first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. That's right, 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, including live same-game parlays, finding bets in the new Explore tab, making a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which I highly recommend, 
said it's the best way to find popular parlays amongst many more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. From elation to heartbreak, we now switch over to discuss the heartbreaker for the women's team up in Blacksburg on Sunday, losing by just one, 63-62, leading for virtually the entire game, even leading for as big as 13 points in the second half without River Baldwin. Really stings, and I, I don't want to try and sugarcoat it this much, but if you ever feel like you could have a good loss, it's probably this one. Super proud of the effort given on the road. Again, when you when you don't have someone as important as River Baldwin has proved that she is to this team this year, and you quite frankly hold your own for nearly all four quarters against a very good Virginia Tech Hokie squad, to then go into such a brutal cold spell in the fourth quarter. I believe Madison Hayes hit a three at the 752 mark in the fourth quarter, did not score again until Sanai Rivers retook the lead with two seconds left. We're talking nearly an eight-minute scoreless streak where if you get a bucket or two, you might win this game, maybe even comfortably, so to speak. Brutal loss on the road. I mean, in the words of YNJ, we could take it way back. I mean, let's look at the beginning of this season when this team was picked to finish eighth in the conference. Like, honestly, I'm not worried at all. This is a team that thrives off of balance, depth, defense did any of those things look like liabilities today at the end of the day this is with all due respect to Westmore and this isn't just a Westmore thing this is more so a basketball thing in general every team will go through some cold stretches some unreasonably long cold stretches. we've we saw this when it was Alyssa Kunane and company there would be times where you just looked up and you're like wait have we gone five minutes without a bucket but you know what remained every time depth defense effort that remained in this game All of those things were there. And so I look at this game and I say, it's an unfortunate outcome. It's an outcome that you don't want. But when you are missing your big body in the paint, when you're missing that true rim protector that River Baldwin is, and you still come with it. And by the way, by the way, I remember telling everybody coming into this year, hey, River Baldwin's going to be expected to do some things offensively. She's going to have to, you know, be serviceable offensively to get us where we want to go. She's been much better than that. We're one of, I want to say, one of, if not the only, one of three, if not the only team that has six players averaging double digits. This team is is by committee. Any given day, anybody can kill you. And the reality is, without River, I don't want to say, hey, it doesn't even feel like a loss. But again, from where we were coming into this season, as a team that got bounced first round, against Princeton in a similar fashion, by the way. We went on a long scoring drought at the end of that game when we were bounced to to see now that we have hit a progression where we're doing that against one of the better teams in the nation. I'm all right. I'm okay. This team is okay. They're going to be all right. They're going to bounce back. They're going to bounce back, and they're going to do more great things this season. You talk about a team by committee. We very nearly had stamped this as the Madison Hayes career game. She had a career high in 21 points all over the court, as she always is, and just really led the charge, especially when you have such a key absence on the road in a a tough environment, too. I understand that was the first regular season sellout for Virginia Tech women's basketball ever, which is kind of crazy considering their success of late. But that's a tough environment without one of your key players. Madison Hayes really stepped up and did basically all that she could pouring in 21. I thought Zoe Brooks had a very acrobatic eight points. She had some very big buckets, some very clutch buckets. You thought, ooh, maybe that would be a dad, the way that they fell. But, you know, ultimately, regardless of whoever stepped up or maybe didn't step up, when you have such a brutal cold spell, and I just keep going back to that, eight minutes nearly scoreless in the fourth quarter, it's going to be hard regardless of how big your lead is against a team like a Virginia Tech. So, That ultimately did them in. Super proud of the effort. You said it doesn't really feel like a loss. In some senses, it kind of doesn't. And that's why I said it feels like a good loss if you can consider this one. Not concerned at all for where this team is going. Maybe the only concern I do have is that apparently River Baldwin may be out for multiple weeks. So you're going to need her to heal up as fast as she possibly can. Certainly hope for a speedy recovery there. You saw very closely in that fourth quarter, maybe some... Maybe some fatigue setting in without someone to lock down the paint there. Tough loss, not concerned with the loss. 
And, you know, this team moving forward, they're going to be just fine. Absolutely. And the other thing that I want to look at when I when I talk about this game is, again, more of that depth, more of that. We talk about any player can be the one that takes that takes the lead role on any night. But let's look at the players who step in in auxiliary roles from night to night. I mean, for so long during this year, people have kind of said, hey, Lacey Steele, what's she about? She's okay. We know she mainly wants to be a shooter, but she's been up. She's been down. There's been some games where she's disappeared and all that good stuff. Provided very quality minutes tonight. Very quality minutes tonight. This is a team that, again, they do it by committee. And the reality is there will be times where you get a game from Sanaya, where you get a game from River, where you get a game from Madison that is so good it makes up for a part or multiple parts being off. This just wasn't one of those nights. You're playing against a, a player that is, you know, has been up for the Naismith Player of the Year um, in terms of Elizabeth Kitley every year for the past two to three, and you're missing the player that's that's supposed to be her answer. Not not really too too devastated here. I I look at this game and I say, you know, I'd rather have it happen now than in March, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Thousand percent. That's probably the best way you could put it now. And you can look at this as like a character building loss too. You go through a little bit of a hardship missing a key player, and you look to some younger players to try and carry the load here. And they did. You mentioned Lacey Steele, a key eight points here, just just coming from a freshman. Zoe Brooks, you know, starting in this game and making several winning basketball plays. You saw a lot of good basketball that will project on to the latter parts of the season. So if you're going to have a loss like this, yeah, 1,000 times I'd rather have this happen in early January than, you know, late February, early March. So, you know, they're going to keep this train rolling here in the midst of ACC play. They got to find ways to keep that momentum. I genuinely believe that they will. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing about this thing. This team needs to keep the momentum. They need to, you know, at the end of the day, I always say the same thing about losses. Don't let one loss turn to two, right. turn to three. Let this one loss be this one loss. Learn from it. Learn what went wrong. Learn, hey, this is these are the things that cost us. And um, if you've been if you've suffered a run blocking injury against Georgia Amore, you may be entitled to compensation. You know that that was quite some pick she was setting there. I never seen the arms out pick before, but it was beautiful. To see, no, but very seriously, you know this is a game that you take something from. You learn what you did wrong. You learn, hey, this is why that drought was as big as it was, and. Maybe we need to go to different things when those types of droughts happen and you go from there. Toughest part about that moving screen, which it was, it was very clearly a moving screen, but if you don't go scoreless for eight minutes in the fourth quarter, you never have that. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Tough one, but they're going to keep it rolling just like we will here on this Monday. Coming up next, men's basketball has quite obviously sold out the UNC matchup on Wednesday night. But we're going to tell you why that's significant after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape some crazy realities of real life, but we got to talk real quick about preparing for real life. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That's kind of crazy. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than loved ones feeling sick during a supply chain issue that kept them from potentially some life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we'll all be okay, and that is because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and amongst many others. This stuff can happen to any of us. Get on over to jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, locked on to get $20 off your order. Jace Medical. Last couple minutes of our Monday show, it might have snuck up on you. It kind of snuck up on us, but welcome to GTHC Week Basketball Edition. We play Carolina Wednesday night. It was announced that we are now sold out for PNC Arena on Wednesday night. Let me tell you why this is significant. Now, leading into this Virginia game on Saturday, I saw several pictures being tweeted out of maybe a lackluster crowd before tip-off. 
And then they were all sort of correcting themselves saying, well, actually, now that the game is tipped off, it's a pretty decent crowd in here. I will say this about our basketball crowds so far this year in PNC. Some of them have been lackluster, and that is kind of hard to watch. This basketball team deserves as much support as they can possibly get because they're trying to get this thing rolling. And despite how some folks feel about the coach and some of the progress that the program has been making, we got to make every effort to support our guys here because they do feed off of that sort of thing, and especially in a big game like this one coming up on Wednesday night. Crowd makes a difference in these types of games. When you feed off of that against your rival, I'll say this about UNC, and I don't want to consider this a compliment, but it is objectively true. They're playing good basketball right now. We have to find a way to disrupt that, and the crowd can play a part of that on Wednesday. These guys deserve our support. They just rattled off two back-to-back ACC wins. They look entirely different, but they're wins nonetheless. We're currently sitting atop of the ACC. I understand it's just January. We're tied with UNC amongst a couple other schools, I believe, including Wake Forest. This is a huge game. It did sneak up on a lot of people, but it's here now. We need the crowd to be loud, red, and active on Wednesday night because we got to find a way to bring this one home. Seems like you were describing my Kool-Aid, but Jaden Taylor, (laughs) here's your chance. You want to talk about being the defensive player of the year, brother? I've got an assignment for you, and I've got one that if you do the job you did on Beekman, not only will you be squarely in the conversation for ACC Defensive Player of the Year, you're in the driver's seat, my dear friend. You are in the driver's seat. R.J. Davis has been on an absolute tear this season. If you can give that man the stuff of nightmare fuel, if you can be all up in his jersey, if you, listen, all I'm saying is this, okay? I need coverage on him so tight, even every pill in the Jace case couldn't get rid of you, okay? That's what I need to see about you, brother. This is a game where there is so much to gain by so many players here, and not just Jaden. I mean, as a team, as a whole, there is not enough respect given to this NC State basketball team, I personally believe. Because to me, 3-0 in the ACC is 3-0 in the ACC. And I don't care what you want to say about, oh, well, you know, you play the down Virginia, Notre Dame, and, and Boston College. Doesn't matter. You did what you had to do. You came away with wins. This is still the ACC conference where anybody can beat anybody on any night. So with that being said, show up. I'll tell you what. There are multiple players that have they have done well so far this season. I want to see you take it to another level. I want to see you take that thing all the way up. Like I said, like I said about football. We were going up. I want to see what the penthouse is like. Same thing here. There is people are lightly starting to say, hmm, all right, what those what those boys in Raleigh up to? I want to see folks be put on full notice Wednesday night. I'm a small bit apprehensive of somebody wanting to name themselves Depoy so early in January, but hey, if you think you got it, Wednesday night is your test. You mentioned RJ Davis. If Jaden Taylor can put him on an island and gives us a fantastic shot to win. You will be the front runner of the depoy, brother. Here's front your runner. chance. If you want to talk it, you better be able to walk it as well. So we got a lot more coverage to come before this game on Wednesday night, more Tuesday and Wednesday. That will do it for us here on Monday. Enjoy your victory Kool-Aid from over the weekend. Be sure to hit that like. Drop your comments in the comment box. We have plenty to choose from for Fan Friday, as always. And hit that subscribe button for continuing to grow our channel It's now important to pivot toward a basketball audience as football is more or less wrapping up. Sad to see it go, but it is full-blown basketball season. We need all the Wolfpack basketball guys now on this channel, so we're going to continue to grow it in that way. We will see you all tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.